Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I just wanted to come and run my mouth and talk about some people. All right, so listen to this. Oh, before we get into, I want to talk about Beyonce some more, <laughs> about the Renaissance tour, because that was a part that I left out. I may talk about it tomorrow. <laughs> it, it, it's a part that I left out that I want to tell y'all. Yeah, I think I may talk about that tomorrow. Anyways, so listen to this. This is according to the Jasmine brand, um, Love and Hip Hop Houston. In the works again. Ah, production scouting potential talent. Um, do you think the third time will be the charm for Love and Hip Hop Houston uh, series? Uh, the Jasmine brand exclusively reports that Love and Hip Hop Houston is reportedly in the works once again. You may recall that in 2016, rumors surfaced that the reality series was making its way to the Texas city. At the time, it was speculated that the cast would include Johnny Blaze, Megan James. DJE, professional boxer twins, uh, Jamal and Jermail uh, Charlo, J. Prince Jr., um, and promoter Luke Keith. Uh, musical artists, Sauce Twins, Kirk Bangs, Just Brittany, and Propane were also rumored to be a part of the 2016 cast. It was ultimately reported that filming was indefinitely paused due to safety concerns for the crew. <laughs> Girl, the girls be banging down here in Houston. Allegedly, extreme violence between the cast and issues with locals caused production to shut down multiple times. Insiders close to the franchise previously told us the Houston situation was just too chaotic. <laughs> Producers in the network were concerned for the safety of the people involved, so they ended, so they ended it. Then in 2018, it was said the producers of the reality franchise were trying to, uh, were trying to create a Houston version. Um, some uh, somehow reports even surfaced that former Destiny's Child member Latoya Luckett signed on to join that project. However, she quickly shut that down and share and post share. Hold up, with the post shared online. Um, according to uh, according to our sources, executives of the Love and Hip Hop franchise are serious about bringing the series to Houston. Blah 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 blah. Girl, so listen. I don't know what's about to happen. Um, this is what I'll say when it comes to reality shows, because for you know, Houston is never really a place where they shoot reality TV shows, or at least, girl, if they shoot them, girl, they never, girl, they never see the light of day. Um, you know, usually it's Atlanta is like the number one spot for whatever reason. When people shoot shows out of Atlanta, they usually sometimes are successful, in my opinion. Um, but it never really makes it to like texas right this is what i this is where i think they go wrong with trying to shoot reality shows in texas people need to realize that houston texas is the fourth largest city in the country or at least it once was When people, for whatever reason, think of Texas, they lump every every city in Texas as like cowboys, horses, girl, hay, rolling down the street. Girl, that's, girl, you don't see that when you come to Houston, girl. Houston is a city. Like, if you walk around Houston, you're not going to see people walking around here with cowboy boots on and a cowboy hat and a flannel shirt. Yeah, probably during the rodeo season, right? But for the most part, you don't see that. Girl, we got the Chanel store, the Gucci, the Louis Vuitton. Girl, we got the YSL. Girl, we got all that, right? The Webster. Girl, we got all that here in Houston. So the, I think they need to start marketing Texas, especially Houston, like they market the other cities, a place that can be glamorous, right? Even though, girl, some of them, let me show a place that can be glamorous, a city, lights, camera, action, and not hee haw. Because I'm like, girl, <laughs> girl, that's not, that's not, and I feel like that's what they did a little bit with the Real Housewives of Dallas. I never got into it. I watched like the first like 15 minutes of the first episode. Then I kind of tuned out because it was, it just wasn't given to me. I think that's what, I think that's how they market. Texas, and I just don't think that's that. I don't think that's the reality at all. So if they do come back, love and hip hop, they need to market love and hip hop like they would do 
any other city and not this hee-haw country, cowboys and cowgirls type of town, right? Girl, y'all gonna have to get it together <laughs> and watch and watch and watch all tempers. Because they, they said the last time, honey, they said y'all was down here pulling out all types of, girl, pow, pow, pows. Girl, they said, girl, y'all was acting a fool. And Mona and them said, hell no. Girl, we thought the girls in Atlanta was ignorant. Oh, this is a brand, this is a different type of ignorant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so. Um, the girls don't know how to argue, fuss, and fight, girl. That's why I be saying, girl, y'all, y'all be quick to pull out a pow, 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 girl. That's why I'm be fooling with y'all. Anyway, <laughs> so Drake, Drake's father, he decided to come to his son's defense. For those who don't know, long story short, Joe Button basically came out and said that Drake's album was a mess. And said that he needs to grow up. He's pushing 40. And he he basically raps like he's in his 20s. That's what I think I remember uh, Joe basically saying. I'm paraphrasing. Um, And that was enough for Birdman to come out and, you know, tell Joe Budden that this is some gangster shit. Girl, like, girl, like, girl y'all... It, so y'all doing all of this because somebody basically said that they didn't like Drake's album. It's a lot. Drake's father has decided to come out and I'm going to read what he said. Before I get into what Drake's father said, let me just say this. I have to, I have to continue to remind myself that a lot of people that have access to social media and they sometimes leave comments. They may not be aware of the things that happened um, pre-social media, right? They not they may not be aware of the scuttlebutt that floated around as it pertains to certain celebrities, right? Um, but before. There was Twitter before there was Instagram. Honey, it was still gossip and it was rumors. And just because it's gossip and it's rumors does not make it true, right? Everything that we hear is not the truth. Everything that we read is not the truth. But it still doesn't take away that there were whispers going around about certain people, right? <laughs> so let me just read what Drake's father said in defense of of Drake, and then I'm going to get into what I really want to say. This is what he said. And the headline uh, goes, uh, this is according to the Neighborhood Talk, oops, Drake's daddy claps back at Joe Budden for telling his son to stop effing 25-year-olds. None of his goddamn business, they're, they're of legal age. And I put in the comments section, they're of legal age sounds so predatory. Let's get into it. It's an effing shame that a young artist, first of all, I don't know if I would consider Drake a young artist. Okay, girl, he's in his 30s, but he's damn near 40. I would, Drake at this point in his career is more of an established artist versus a young artist. <laughs> okay? Even if you want to take his age out of it, girl, this is not Drake's first time at the rodeo. Drake has albums on top of albums on top of albums, okay? Um, it's an effing shame that a young artist can't do his own thing and enjoy his glory without some old hater mf -er trying to bust his bubble because he has nothing going on. And to mention or to put a limit on what age anyone should be dealing with, which is none of his goddamn business as long as they're of legal age. Let me read it again. And to mention or to put a limit on what age anyone should be dealing with, which is uh, dealing with, which is none of his goddamn business as long as they're of legal age. I'm sick of these old efforts, uh, haters effing with my son. If you don't like what he does, keep it moving, mother effer. He's not bothering you. I'd be trying to tell y'all. His Drake's daddy just confirmed it. Girl, they just wait till you of legal age. 
As long as you're of legal age and you're okay. It's no different than Jay-Z. Let me tell y'all something. There have been rumors and gossip about Jay-Z, bless her heart, but supposedly back in the day, Dang Dash and Jay-Z allegedly were passing Aaliyah around. I've always had questions for Aaliyah's mama and her daddy. Especially her daddy. There were rumors about Foxy Brown and Jay-Z. And then here we got Jay-Z. You know, I don't want to go backwards, but now we got Beyonce standing up. She met Jay-Z when she was 18, 19. They saw a date when she was 20. But somewhere along the line, she stands up and give a toast talking about, oh, you make you taught me how to be a woman. Girl, if that don't give predatory tease, I don't know what does. You meet a 20, girl, you start dating a 20-year-old girl, woman, young woman. I'm not going to say call her a girl. You start dating a 20-year-old young woman. And then somewhere along the line, she gets up and says, you taught me how to be a woman. Girl, what? You have, like somebody mentioned, we talked about this before. These men are disgusting. And when I say men, I'm talking about the gay ones too. They the same way. They will wait till you turn 18 and try and get some ass from you. Because they know at that point, girl, forget integrity and morals. Legally, I ain't going to jail. Celine Dion, bless her little heart. I hope she all right. Her ex-husband, not her ex-husband, her husband that passed away, Renee, he was trash too. See, that's the thing. A lot of this stuff was going on before a lot of y'all was. If you ain't probably, if you're not probably 35 or older, then you probably don't remember none of this stuff. But some of the older girls and boys, we remember this stuff. Renee, Celine Dion's husband was trash. He waited until she was 18 too. That's all they do. As long as you're, of like, like Drake's father said, they're of legal age. Then it's a green light for them. Marcus Houston, disgusting. Jay-Z, trifling and disgusting. Renee, trifling and disgusting. Drake's daddy, trifling and disgusting. They all trifling. It's nasty. I don't care how you slice it and dice it. These girls ain't even legally grown. Can't even can't even legally go inside of a, a of a store and buy a bottle of alcohol. Can't even rent a car. Okay? Brains ain't even fully developed. And then there are some of you, no Tino Shade, who want to get on the internet defending Jay-Z's relationship with Beyonce and how they met and what age they started dating. No. Jay-Z's trash, too. Sorry to break it to you. And quiet as it's kept, if you really want to be honest about it, I don't think Matthew gave a damn once he, once he real clear. This is, what I, this is what I think. I think back in the day, one of the things that was hot was for the girls to be with the bad boy, right? So you would have the good girl, right, and the bad boy. Beyonce was the good girl, right? Who was supposed to be a virgin. You know, they, you know, back in the day, the girls really couldn't say that if they were virgins or not. I think the first girl who ever really just came out and said that she wasn't a virgin was Christina Aguilera. You remember on Strip, on one of her songs, she confirmed it. But other than that, the girls had to pretend that they were virgins and that their first boyfriend was their first lover, right? But that was real big back in the day. The good girl, which would be Beyonce, and the bad boy, which would be Jay-Z. And Matthew didn't care. Matthew was just trying to make sure that his daughter's career went to where it needed to go. And Tina was too busy trying to make sure you were trying to check if Matthew was cheating on her, and he was, to worry about what was going on. That's why Jay, that's, that's why, because she was so busy worried about Matthew, she couldn't teach her daughter how to be a woman. And Jay Z stepped up into the picture and Beyonce got up talking about, You taught me how to be a woman. Girl. Okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway, that's all I wanted to say, girl. Drake's father is trash. They all the same. They are all 
Listen, I ain't 18 years old. And girl, the girls, girl, I'm t I told y'all the story about one of my friends. One of my friends has a cousin who, when she turned 18, the guy who used to babysit her, girl, an older guy used to babysit her. Why he tried to talk to her when she turned 18? Now, mind you, this is pretty much a family friend. But as soon as she turned 18, he tried to talk to her. You, you got to even watch the people who's supposed to be family friends and been watching your daughter, babysitting your daughter since she was a little girl. Mm. Omarosa. I know some of y'all don't like Omarosa. I follow Omarosa on Instagram. I live for Omarosa. She a mess. And, you know. But, girl, I just feel like if y'all can forgive Kanye and all the other ones, girl, y'all can forgive Omarosa. Omarosa calls Donald Trump the biggest fraud as she expresses her regret for supporting him. I fell for a con man. man. In a recent interview to promote her new show, House of Villains, Omarosa, a uh, real name Omarosa Newman, opened up about her experience working uh, as a former political aide for former U.S. President Donald Trump. During her appearance, Omarosa 49 shared her regrets about Donald Trump 77 while he was in office. Um... Omarosa said, I'm just going to read some of what she said. Omarosa said, for me, I just can't believe I fell for a con man, a con man who turned out to be the biggest fraud. I mean, literally found, out, found by the courts to be a big fraud. So a lot of the backdrop of our show, a lot of the apprentice that we thought was real was fabricated and it was just a house of cards. Um, so, I mean, we were duped and we were young entrepreneurs thinking that we were really going to learn something from this br brilliant businessman. And we all we learned was not the art of to deal. Wait, all we learned was not the art of the deal, but the art of the con. Omarosa, let me say something. One thing I will stand on until the day I die is that I think that Omarosa is one of the smartest people I have ever seen on my television screen. I have never seen Omarosa in an inter in, in an interview get backed into a corner. And if they try to back her into a corner, honey, she gets her, she gets out fast. <laughs> okay. I have seen Omarosa go onto TV shows and check the host. Girl, girl I don't saw her check, try to check Wendy Wood. Remember what remember when her Wendy Wood since old school. Remember when her Wendy Williams got into it? <laughs> girl, that was a mess. Girl, I saw her get into it with Joy. Was that Joy on The View? This white lady. I forgot her name. What's her name? Savannah? Girl, Omarosa don't play no games. And that's why, as much as I love Omarosa, I know Omarosa full of shit. Omarosa, Omarosa is too smart to believe what she just said. While, yes, when you were on The Apprentice, I could see you believing that. But after that, Right. And years after that, and even when you decided to work for this man, you knew what the T was. Omarosa, you just wanted to get ahead. Come hook or come crook. Omarosa wanted to get ahead. She wanted to check. And now, girl, now it's, oh, I got duped. No, Omarosa, you did not get duped. If you wanted to use that excuse for the apprentice, fine. But after that, girl, no, Omarosa is too smart of a woman. Omarosa is too smart of a person. Take gender out of it, girl. Omarosa is just too smart of a person, girl, for me to believe some bullshit like this. Omarosa, we love you, but I love you. But, girl, I'm not going to let you play in my face. I would love to just, like, shadow Omarosa while she's at work. I would probably be just so in awe. She would probably intimidate the... Omarosa so smart to me. She would intimidate the hell out of me, quiet as it's kept. Shout out to Omarosa. But girl, you full of shit. <laughs> oh, wait. Um, listen to this update. This is an update according to, Jazz, to the Jasmine brand. Gunplay loses custody of his infant daughter after missing court date. Rapper accused of pointing a rifle at his wife while she held their child. So neat, new details have surfaced surrounding Gunplay's um, domestic Abuse case, as previously reported in August, the rapper's estranged wife, Von Shea Taylor, said he pointed a rifle at her while she was holding their six-month-old uh, daughter. Gunplay was arrested and charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, false imprisonment, and child abuse. 
Following the crazy incident, Von Shea filed for divorce and got a temporary restraining order against a power soccer artist. Um, according to news report, Gunplay skipped out on a recent court date and lost custody of his daughter. Now he's only allowed to see the young child through court monitored visits or virtually through an app called Talking Parents. Girl, he don't care. You think Gunplay give a damn? And I can, I can guarantee you he is a type of person Girl, that was swarping down, girl. Girl, the black woman is just against him. The system is against him. Come play. You didn't. You couldn't even. You couldn't even. You couldn't even. You couldn't even get your ass down to the courthouse to make sure. If you really wanted to see your daughter, girl, you would have been into the courthouse. But the simple fact that you at your ass and show up lets me know that you don't give a damn about that girl. You don't give a damn about your child. And quiet is kept. Even if he did show up, even if he did show up, if this girl, if, if what this girl is saying is true, honey, he's. I would try my heart. Whether you can't see my child, anyways. So quiet is kept. This might be a blessing in disguise while I'm talking. Because if he really did point a rifle at her and while she's holding the baby, he ain't got no business being able to see that baby in the first place, or the last place, oh, a place. Okay. Mm-mm. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. I'm just saying, y'all. I'm just saying. Oh, girl, listen to this, girl. King Harris claims he lived with his grandmother growing up despite the depiction of his family's show. They'll pick me up to film, and then right when the cameras go off, I'm right back at my grandma's house. This is some of what he had to say. So what is, what is the real guy, what do you feel like they got on you that they shouldn't have on you? Because I feel like with them probably seeing you grow up, they just got like, you can't be you. Go. Yeah, man, it's a lot about that TV show, man, that got people confused. Because um, I live with my grandma. You know, we'll go to the house on like a weekend. They'll say, hey, we shooting today. We need y'all at the house. They'll come get me from my grandma's house. And right after we done, when the cameras go off, I'm right back to my grandma's house. Mm. Yeah, yeah. First thing is this. Why is King Harris doing an interview? <laughs> What girl like who said, yeah, let's get King down here and interview him? Girl, who said that? The second thing is this. Believe it or not. I said, oh. See, I didn't know this. I said, oh. I could see this being a part of the reason why he cuts up and acts a fool. I can see it. Wanting to get wanting to get attention from mommy and daddy. I should have known something was up when T.I. was down to the internet talking about he 18, he grown. Girl, no wonder why you so busy. So you so girl so ready to make him grown. Cause you ain't never took care of him. Girl, he was living with the grandma. I'm trying to figure out why was why was why was King living with with, with their grandmother? Because Tiny, it ain't like Tiny was this working woman traveling around the world with escape girl, and get you get you ya 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 girl. So what? I lived with my grandmother my last two years of high school. My mother moved to another city, and I did not want to move. I wanted to finish high school where I grew up from, where I grew up at. So that's why I moved with my grandmother, right? I was like, I don't want to move. I'm not moving. I don't want to move. And she was like, okay, right? And then I told my grandmother, I'm moving in with you. And she was like, okay. And I moved in with my grandmother, <laughs> okay? Um, but I don't think this is the same situation. It just sounds like P.I. and Tiny wasn't raising their children. And then when I'm looking at the comments, people are saying in the comments that Zonique said the same thing. 
<laughs> no tea, no shade. Y'all wonder why y'all kids walking around here cutting up and acting a fool because y'all did not raise y'all kids. Y'all got Deja around here with mental health problems. You got Zonique down here, girl, bringing girl, all types of guns to the airport. You got King down here, girl, at the Waffle House threatening to pistol whip people. Got a mug shot at 17 or 18 years old. And then we wonder why these kids are cutting up and acting a fool, especially this King. And then y'all named him King. That's another part. That's another part of the problem, too. He's still a mess. I'm talking about King. He's still a mess. But at least I I feel like I have a, a little bit of understanding now of why he probably acts the way that he acts. Girl, y'all would literally use your children to shoot a TV show, and then after the TV show was done, girl, ship them back off to their grandmother's house. You know how much, you know how trifling you got to be? So it sounded like T.I. wasn't shit, and it sounded like Tony wasn't shit. And now you got King got her got, got a mug shot before he even 21. I mean, it's not good to have a mug shot at all. But now you got girl, but now you got now, now you got now you got King got her girl just cutting up and acting a fool. And T.I. talking about he grow, he 18, he grow. Girl, you ain't never took care of your son, clearly. That's why he's so quick to throw him out on the streets. Because he grow. 18 is not grown. Anyways, y'all, that's all I had to say. I'm gone. I'll talk to y'all later. Have a good day. Bye, y'all.